kept this journal for a long time, and at first, when my wife got it, it became more of a paperweight than anything else, but I decided to bring it out now since there seems to be something going on here. Recently, Tuffham signed an agreement for this new nuclear power plant the government is building on the Brendan branch between the docks and Suddery. Of all the places they could have put it, they had to put it near the most beautiful line, in my opinion. That's going to affect tourism, and that's probably why the big man signed that contract to take nuclear waste soon from the mainland. He's got to regain that money somehow anyways, besides that nothing's changed. What else? Edward's doing fine, and he's got a similar opinion to me on the power plant. He said it's going to be an eyesore, but he does like the idea of doing more work. I'm writing this while we wait for the all clear at the platform, so I'll keep this book in the cab if we spot anything else going on. God damn it, I knew this would happen. The power plant exploded. We were at Wellsworth when it happened. We heard a loud explosion. The sky went red, and this huge cloud was visible in the distance. Sydney and I knew exactly where that came from, and we knew that we had to leave. People cleared the platform faster than I have ever seen before. We knew the shockwave would be coming fast, so we didn't even wait for an all clear. We released the brakes, hit the regulator, and pulled on the whistle for dear life, hoping that Cedric was still in the signal box to set the point. Thank God he was, because without him, we would have been killed. We sped down the line at speeds we've never gone before. Asked Donald, who was heading the opposite way, pulling so good, we found out later that he didn't make it out alive. Neither did William or Colin in his head. Edward was probably the most horrified out of all of us, and I don't blame him. While we all had some layer of protection, he didn't, so that probably motivated him to go faster. We shot past Crosby, and that's when the shockwave hit us, and it was strong. It caused the glass in the coaches to shatter and rock them side to side. Edward's truck pony truck also derailed on the phone because of it, but those things didn't stop us. We could feel the heat rise, but it didn't stop until we got to Medford. Good evening, I'm Dr. Stuart Bailey. I work for the Atomic Energy Authority I've worked for the AEE for 10 years, three of which I spent at AEE Winfrith near Dorset. I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Middleton and Dr. Dalby, both of which are my junior. At about 2.30 this afternoon, that's July 4th, the power station at Lower Brendam suffered a widespread system failure. 
of four reactors online, only one is currently operating. The plant is currently running on backup power with staff attempting to remedy the problem. The amount of radiation vented, or if radiation has been vented at all, is currently unknown. Teams from the Atomic Energy Authority have been dispatched to Lower Brendam to take radiation readings. We urge the citizens of Western Sodor to stay in their homes until the state of emergency is lifted or an order to evacuate is given. Uh, thank you. We got a call from an unnamed signalman about Boko who found out he came back to Selda after taking a goods train from the mainland and went straight to Brendan Docks. Nobody told Frank and Marshall about the power plant, so they drove him straight into the contaminated area. I've been told they haven't come out of their lives. Next morning, a crowd of people forced their way out of the ticket office next to us to raid and see Bun to get some food to eat. Something got to them during the night. We heard them screaming in fear, and they didn't get back to the room. We covered all the windows with drapes and blankets so that we didn't get hurt if something else happened like another explosion. I really hope they're okay. Edward was okay. I couldn't believe it. Edward was still there. He was scared, and some of the coaches were badly burned, but he was okay. Edward was low on coal, but he did have enough water left to make it to Tidmouth. If engines would be hiding anywhere on the island, it's there. We were shocked to see James pull up to the station with empty coaches. He seemed pretty pent up about something. Since he was taking his anger out on Edward, we didn't know what was going on in his mind at the time. But Joseph told me they left half of their train at the platform instead of getting them all aboard before the blast hit them. But by the way he was acting, James definitely saw something the rest of us didn't. After laying about in the station for about an hour, we thought it was time we left. Felix and I were talking about how scary it was to run away from such a disaster. We've all decided to entirely ditch the idea of going to Tidmouth and head straight to the Vickerstown Bridge.
While we were heading down the line, Edward had to stop for water. Felix made sure James didn't slow down and shot right past us, hoping to get across to the mainland. However, they went on the wrong line and went straight to Sunbury. I haven't seen them since. Sydney and I decided to check in Wellsworth for something to eat, but we didn't even want to take a step off Edward's footplate when we saw shattered glass everywhere, but we knew we had to investigate. We saw a few bodies too, but they were beyond recognition. After failing to find survivors at Wellsworth Station, I decided to go into the village and attempt to find any more scared souls who had survived this nightmare. Sydney, on the other hand, stayed with Edward and kept him company. I searched a few buildings thoroughly but with no prevail before I decided to head back to Edward since it was getting dark, but as I was walking up to the old engine my two-way radio started to make static. Got a call from Jem Cole on my two-way radio. He took shelter in a bunker underneath his house that he had built a few years ago. His wife and daughter were okay. Too poor Trevor though the blast got in bad. Jem had his rifle on him and put the traction engine out of his misery. Edward broke down in tears when I told him the news. We talked about our adventures with Trevor until we felt drowsy, and we've decided to sleep inside Edward's cab tonight. It might be risky, but it's less hazardous than sleeping in a building with tons of shattered glass inside it. Luckily, we still had a spare fire blanket in the cab, so we used that. I hope this nightmare ends soon.
1411-1. Engine known as Oliver has been acquired. Beaten up a bit after being derailed by Harold and Herbert. Harry and Bert to the locals. The ironworks engines. Left on siding outside the main building. Experiment 1411-2. Engine has been injected with a dosage of... Engine has complained about nausea and a pain internally. We put the engine to sleep and we'll be doing some further research. 1411-3. Searchers have tasked Harold and Herbert to block engines from entering. Engine has started to show signs of awakening. Test on nearby flat car proved successful after knocking it on its side in about one swift movement. Engine has been given anesthetics after terminating the test. 1411-4. Circulation in the face has ceased. Engine's last face is a concerned expression. New host seems to have taken over. Tendrils have grown in length and are able to hold itself off the ground. We're really making major progress now. 1411-5. Face is now removable, exposing the mouth and teeth. Tendrils can come out of the mouth now. Oh, it's getting hungry. Chapin's gone missing. Blood dripping from his mouth pretty much answered our question. We lured the ironworks engines in and got them ready for the test. They were horrified. One of them tried running into it, and the other reversed. One trying to escape derailed and was torn in half. The oil was dripping everywhere, and there was a fire. The engine went after the second one and compressed the front half, killing it instantly. Yeah. Test was successful. Scrap will be sold later. 1411-7. Diesel 10 was prepped for combat test. This will be our final combat test before mission is operational. Diesel was brought in and combat commenced. D-10 held a decent fight, calling it multiple names. Creature, beast, monster. But the engine got the upper hand. Engine ripped off the hydraulic claw on the roof and tore off a buffer. Diesel 10 was powerless and begged for mercy, apologizing to steam engines in general. Engine took the thin end of the claw and jammed it into the middle of D10's face. We have decided to call it the Beast. 1411-8. Towed brake van to monitor the. Uh, this will help us be able to figure out. We woke up to the sound of rain pelting the top of Edward's camp. We got up and we started getting his fire ready and noticed how we're only half full with his coal capacity. Then to a surprise, we saw Percy shoot past us with what seemed to be an Ian Clarabelle. Along with a single troublesome truck on the back, they seemed to be completely unscathed and didn't even stop to check on us. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
Let's <laughs> go.